Hello and welcome. In this video I want to talk about how to find areas underneath curves using calculus. So let me begin by drawing a set of axes. So we have the vertical y-axis and a horizontal x-axis. And suppose we have a a function that looks like this, which I'm going to call some function of x, f of x. And we want to find the area between a couple of points on this axis. So we want to find the area between this interval. And I'll project this point down to be point A on the x-axis and this point projected down will be point B and we want to find the area enclosed by this graph and this interval so this is the area that we're uh, trying to calculate so how would I go about finding the area well I have the function f of x and if I was to integrate this function I would get a primitive function, let's call it capital F of x. Okay, so little f of x may be a polynomial function, and if I was to integrate it, I would get a another polynomial function which has a higher degree. Um, there are certain functions where we won't be able to find the primitive, but in cases where we can find the primitive, so in cases where we can carry out this integration, Okay, so in cases where we can find this primitive function, we can say that the integral from point A to point B of the function, so at x equals A, from x equals A to x equals B, is equal to the value of the primitive function at B minus the value of the primitive function at A. Okay, so this is what we call a definite integral and instead of yielding an expression where x is the variable, we actually have a value. And this rule, if I so call it, is what we call the fundamental fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, what does this have to do with the area that we're looking for? Well, it happens to be that this area is equal to the integral from point A to point B so from x equals a to x equals b of the original function which of course is equal to the value of uh, the primitive function at b minus the value of the primitive function at a so we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to calculate the area underneath curves between x equals a and x equals b. Okay, I won't go through how this rule came about in this video. I'll leave that for another video, but there is one important thing we got to take note before we carry out this operation, and that's to ensure that f of x is continuous between this interval a and b. And what I have is an example of a continuous function between A and B. But if my graph was to go something like this, let's say it goes to here, and then all of a sudden it gaps down to this point and then comes back up like that. Well, there's a, discontinu there's a discontinuity here and this uh, rule would not be valid anymore. Equally, if I would have my graph, let's say, asymptotes at some point in B, 
between, like that. This is another example of a discontinuous uh, function, and therefore we can't apply this rule anymore. So we've got to make sure that the graph is continuous between the points where we want to f integrate or we between where we want to find the area. So uh, even if we do have a discontinuous function, I can still perfectly find the area uh, at an interval where it is continuous. So I say I can break it into this area here and I can still find this area here because the function is continuous between points where I want to integrate. Okay, let's go through a few examples. In my first example I have the graph y is equal to x squared plus 2 or I should say f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. So we have a parabola that's shifted up by two units and suppose I want to find the area between x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to positive 2. So according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, the area is going to be the integral between x is equal to negative 2 to x is equal to 2 of the function, which is x squared plus 2 with respect to x. And the first thing I do is to find the antiderivative or the primitive function, which is going to be equal to x to the power of 3 times a third plus 2x. And normally, when I find an antiderivative, I would include the integration constant plus c, but for definite integrals, we actually don't need to include it because it's going to cancel out at the end. And I will write the uh, right-hand side of the function in this notation. So it's the um, primitive or the antiderivative bounded by x, x, x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 2, which simply means I'm yet to evaluate uh, what this comes out to be. Um, I'm yet to determine uh, what the left hand side, sorry, what the right hand side is going to equal. And this simply means we have one third x, sorry, one third times two to the power of three. So substituting in the upper bound for x times two times two, plus two times two, sorry, minus one third x or well, one-third times negative 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 times negative 2. And this then evaluates 2. So 2 to the power of 3 is 8 times one-third is 8 on 3 plus 4 minus 2 to the power of 3 is uh, negative 2 to the power of 3 is negative 8 so that becomes negative 8 on 3 if I further expand it out I'll get 8 on 3 plus 8 on 3 plus 4 plus 4 which will give me 16 on 3 plus 8 which is equal to 13 and a third okay so this area is equal to 13 and a third units squared. Let's do another example. Let's suppose I have the function now y is equal to x squared minus 2. So now my graph looks like this. Okay, so it's basically a parabola that's shifted down by 2 and my I happen to know that my x-intercepts are going to be positive square root 2 and minus square root 2. And let's say I want to find this area. So I want to find the area between x equals negative root 2 
to x equals positive root 2. So again, then I will determine the integral from x is equal to negative the square root 2 to x is equal to positive square root 2 of x squared minus 2 with respect to x. And first of all, I would find the uh, antiderivative, which is 1 third x cubed minus 2x. And that will be bounded by positive square root 2 to negative square root 2 and then evaluate the right hand side. So I shall get 1 third times the square root 2 cubed minus 2 times root 2 minus 1 third of negative square root 2 cubed minus 2 times negative root 2. So this will give me 2 times square root 2 divided by 3 minus 2 times square root 2 minus negative 2 times square root 2 over 3 plus 2 times square root 2. If I was to take a square root 2, so if I factorise out a square root 2, 2 square root 2, I will get um, 1 third minus 1 then minus negative one third plus one. And this comes out to equal negative eight times square root of two on three. So this area is going to equal negative eight times root 2 on 3 units squared. So uh, you might be thinking, well this is quite peculiar, how is it possible to have a negative area? Well in this instance it is not mathematically incorrect because uh, we performed this um, definite inter integral in the correct way and uh, the negative result is what we came out with. So it's not mathematically incorrect but uh, physically, it is quite obvious that it is impossible to have a negative uh, area. So, depending on uh, what your uh, teacher wants you to do, note that this physical area would be the absolute value of this integral. If you are currently studying math, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for future videos that may help you on exams or assignments. And as always, Please feel free to ask me any question by commenting on any of the videos that you've seen. Thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something.